This is one of the most frequently asked questions in the community of boxing and it is very misunderstood. Should boxers lift weights? I know you're probably expecting some black and white answer, but it is simply not that simple. It depends. Opinions differ a lot when it comes to lifting in the community of boxing. But you have to understand that lifting is a very broad term. It cannot be generalized into small ideas. You have bodybuilding, you have Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, plyometrics. The categories of lifting are gigantic. When you hear your coach say no to strength training for boxing, they are most probably thinking of bodybuilding. You see, bodybuilding is not the ideal style of lifting for boxing. Why not, you may ask? Well, because bodybuilding focuses on aesthetics and mass, not power and speed, which are two very important elements in boxing. Slow repetitions are commonly used in bodybuilding to enhance time under tension, or in other words, get that pump. And this will affect your velocity negatively in boxing. You will lose speed by this kind of training. But for bodybuilding, that is another thing. Bodybuilding also places huge emphasis on isolated lifts, which mean they target specific muscles. They might do the biceps only one session, then they might do the shoulders only, the back muscles only. Generally, when you train for athleticism, you will focus on compound lifts, which is exercises that focus on many parts simultaneously. As a boxer, you will need speed, power and agility. This is what all the lifting needs to focus on. This is what the lifting needs to enhance. Otherwise, it's probably not that productive. Another very commonly asked question in the world of boxing is, will lifting slow me down? Many traditionalist coaches will say, yes, lifting will slow you down, down because once again, they are biased by this bodybuilding type of training that was very popular in the 70s or 80s. But no, Lifting will not slow you down, because lifting is a broad term. The wrong kind of lifting will slow you down, and the right kind of lifting will actually make you faster than ever. This is called a force velocity curve, and as you can see, you get the qualities that you train for. If you train for speed, you will get speed. If you train for strength, you will get strength, and there are many other categories for this. They both require different approaches, like if you train for maximal strength, you will do the heavy lifts as heavy as you can, or rather an intensity above 80% of your one rep maximum, for example. If you train for speed, you will go with light weights usually, but do them as fast as you can to use those type 2x muscle fibers, those rapid muscle fibers that are mostly dependent on motor neurons in your brain. You see, speed is a mental game. You need the intention to, you need intention in your brain to enhance this speed. Which is why you probably see a lot of track and field athletes or rather powerlifters who are sometimes looking very skinny like, oh, they need to have big muscles to be fast and powerful, right? No, it is because they have trained their fast twitch muscle fibers. That is why they are so explosive and powerful. Saying lifting makes you slow is like saying eating will make you fat. You, you see, it, it really depends on how you approach this. With that said, if you decide to lift, there is one thing that is non-negotiable. This is mandatory. This should be ingrained in you. Like, don't even discuss it. Boxing should always come first. Boxing is a sport that is based on skill primarily. Without it, your power, your athleticism, it will mean nothing. You will get outskilled by a smarter opponent if you don't have the necessary skills. It is just that simple. And many beginners, they seek shortcuts to become a better boxer, like they watch videos of Mike Tyson, uh, George Foreman, Deontay Wilder, whoever you want, and they see them knocking people out and like, oh yes, I want to do this too, like how do I develop this knockout power? Give me five exercises to increase punching power, well, how do I do it? What exercises do you recommend? Like, This is a shortcut, you will not, you will not blast through the ranks if you do a bunch of exercises to increase your power output. Like if you lack the if you lack the fundamentals of boxing, focusing on strength training and power training, it will not make a difference. You need those fundamentals. 
If you're someone that has done this for say 10,000 hours, you have like every angle change, every footwork, every the snap behind your punches, all of that ingrained in you, like drinking water or something, then and only then will strength and power training be beneficial for you. But don't start doing this if you don't, if you don't have the fundamentals. It is not productive. You will not, you will not win fights this way. And you will not be able to use your full power anyways if you are lacking striking technique. You see, there is certain technique in a knockout punch. It's not just strength and power. There is timing to it. There is like the relationship between hip and leg, shoulder. All of those need to work together. Like it's, it's complex. It's not that easy, as, as easy as you think. Say you spend four hours a week on lifting. After one year, that's 208 hours. And most people, honestly, they can spend three hours every day, not just in a week, like three hours of lifting every day. Do you know how much boxing you could learn if you instead invested all of those hours on boxing itself? Do you think you will have an advantage over someone who spends those hours on boxing itself? Maybe. I don't know. But think of this. All those hours you spend on lifting, they could be spent on head movement, on counters, on footwork, on angles, striking technique, all of those things. Like four hours of lifting every week after one year, 208 hours, 208 hours that you could use on boxing technique, like increase your skills. You can outmaneuver stronger opponents this way. Skill will always beat power. Brute, brute power in boxing. It will always be that way. Skill is something vital, mandatory. And this is even more important when you are a beginner and lack boxing fundamentals. Like This is the, especially the time that you need to spend your time on boxing training, on the skills of boxing. And anyways, if you decide to do a lift like, okay, sacrifice your boxing sessions, now you're in the gym, okay. Can you even like ask yourself, ask yourself, how will this specific lift benefit me as a boxer? It surprises me so much. Most people can't even answer this question. They don't know why they are lifting or doing a particular exercise. Do you even know that? With that said, should you be skipping lifting altogether? Well, no, because lifting is still an important component for general fitness and injury prevention. But the time spent needs to be minimal to make room for boxing fundamentals, of course. Instead of spending four hours a week on lifting if when you are a beginner in boxing, you can do it like, cut it down. Like, one session is probably enough if you are a beginner. One session of lifting. If you're some world-class boxer who has done like 20, 30,000 hours of boxing already, like, oh, you know all the skills, then it is advantage to, it might be an advantage to do a bunch of power and strength training, like, very frequently. Also, when you do lifting for boxing, there is certain goals this needs to fulfill. That is joint strength and injury prevention. You need power, speed, and explosiveness. You need agility and change of directions. Your lifting needs to enhance those areas. If it doesn't, like... If it doesn't, then why are you doing it? Are you doing it just to look good? Then you're missing the point. (coughs) So in a nutshell, for new boxers, your main goal with lifting should be durability. Like if you're new to boxing, you lack all the skills and fundamentals, just lift very shortly, like one session a week, I would say. And your goal should be durability, like injury prevention. Strengthen your joints and muscles so that you don't get prone to knee injuries because lifting will help with this it will help you to get a strong body and you will withstand injuries also you need to realize that every boxer have different needs when it comes to lifting boxer a might be very strong but he lacks speed in this case a speed training program would be beneficial for him like those explosive type of lifts like plyometrics olympic lifts ballistic training to make his strength usable for boxing Boxer B might be very fast, but he lacks strength. He will catch his opponents like, I would rather have a boxer being very fast than very strong. It's more beneficial for boxing, yes. But if he would add some strength into these, this speed that he has, like he would, have, he would be able to generate a lot more power behind his punches. Like It would make up for his weakness, of course. 
then boxer C, he might lack both of them, so he needs a mix. You, you see, every boxer has different needs when it comes to lifting. So that you also need to keep in mind. And this is a huge topic, of course. I can't explain this all in one single video. This was just to give you a general idea. I hope you learned something from it. Stay tuned for future videos on this subject. Thanks for watching.